Hey guys, it's John Rubel Custom Rods and welcome back to another live stream edition today. Um, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, and although I'm live right now, there's no one else dialed in, but hopefully uh, you guys will dial in here soon and uh, we can have a good live stream. And you, I can show you guys maybe something new or something that you weren't um, aware about or a technique, if you will. Um, and welcome to whoever just joined. You're the first person to join, so thanks for showing up. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm going to show a technique. What's going on, Earl? I'm going to show uh, a technique um, that I'm going to do. Hey, James, how's it going? And um, I, I wanted to show you guys this technique. You may be aware of it. You may not be aware of it. It's got to do with resin. Um, and or um, like resin powder, um, like mica uh, powder or you know pigment powder. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys this technique because I think it's a pretty cool way to to use it in in sort of an unconventional way. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start um, with this wrap really quick. And so the first thing that I want to tell you is I'm using. Um, uh, I saw your comment, James. So what I, the first thing I want to tell you that I'm using back here, you can barely see it. This is size A, uh, and I think this is pretty important. So I'm using size A um, uh, Pro Wrap Color Fast White Thread. Um, and there's a reason why I'm using this white thread, not just because this blank is white, um, but you guys will see here in a moment. Um, and this build here is a it's an ice rod blank um but i am in here i'll let you guys see i'll just kind of slide in so this is an ice rod build blank that i'm working on so short fight you know short fighting butt at the bottom little foregrip there um but what i'm doing um with this ice rod blank is i'm actually making uh squid jig rods and so um that's what I'm actually making, but I thought you guys would really enjoy this different technique um, with powder. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make quite a lengthy wrap with this thread. Again, this is size A Pro Wrap Color Fast Thread, right? So treated thread is going to maintain its color, uh, that white um, color. And the other reason why I'm choosing this white um, thread is because it's kind of like a canvas, if you will, um, for what, what I'm going to show you guys how to do here. And so I want to wrap this down quite a bit. Um, and the one thing I do want to do is um, I'm going to use uh, the guys. So the guys that, I, uh, that I'm using for these squid jig rods, these are the CRB uh, laser guides. They're again, ice rod guides, but I like to use these for the squid jig rods. Um, and I wanna measure out um, where my first guide is gonna be, which is down at the 19 inch mark, which I'm just off camera, which you guys won't be able to see. But I'll show you here. Um, there is my 19 inch mark, and then there's the spine of the rod. Um, so the reason why I put that 19 inch mark down there is because that's where I want my guide, uh, the top of my guide to sit at. So actually, if I slide that out a bit, you can see that. Then what I want to do is I'm going to take this guide and I'm just going to get a rough idea of where I want. So I want the, the center of the ring on this guide kind of at that 19 inch mark right about there. And then I'm gonna use this small, I don't need to use that piece of tape, but I wanna use this other piece. And I wanna mark the back side of the foot or the heel um, of the guide. And what I mean by that is, I wanna mark this spot right here on that guide. That's the heel of the guide because that is where my thread is going to stop. So I'm going to wrap this white 
um, Pro Wrap NCP thread all the way to where that heel of that guide is going to be at. Um, and that's going to basically, I'm going to carry that up like a, uh, like a, a long under wrap, but it's a decorative wrap that goes all the way up um, underneath that, that guide foot. So I'm going to wrap this down quite a bit and, and I want to make sure, you know, my blank is clean and I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm getting a good tight wrap on this thread. Uh, and this will take me a little bit here. But again, what I'm going to do um, is I am going to show you a different technique um, when we're using um, pigments or mica powder or resin powder like these here from Polycolor. Um, so I'm using a black. As you can see, the theme of the rod is kind of white, black, and gray. And then I have some white metallic that I'm going to use. Um, but I'm going to show you guys... Um, this other technique that I, I think is pretty interesting, especially if you couple it uh, with a couple other techniques. It just gives you um, a different take or look, um, you know, different, different ways to come up with patterns um, to make your, your rod build, you know, unique um, or custom or, you know, make every rod build you make um, look a little bit different. Um, you know, I think that's kind of key if you're into building custom fishing rods. So that way they're, in my mind, um, they're not all the same. I, I, I like them not to be the same in some small shape or fashion, not be the same. So I'm going to wrap this down. We're going to keep on wrapping down here a little bit. Uh, and you guys let me know down in the comments block. Have you guys used uh, some of the resin powder? Um, from Polycore before. Um, if you have, let me know what you think about it or any pigment really. Um, let me know what you think about it. If you like using that stuff or if you've never used pigments at all, um, you know, you can let me know down in the comment and, and that's okay. Some people are, don't like the look of pigments. You know, you know, some people love the look of it and some people are a little scared um, to mess around with it. So, um, but we'll keep on wrapping this down. And then again, I'm just making sure it's nice and packed with my burnishing tool. And I want to get it all the way down to that back point where it takes up um, the heel of the guide foot. And then again, um, if you're just joining, welcome. Um, doing something a little bit different here um, with pigments. Um, and uh, I'm using today, I'm using some black metallic and some white metallic uh, resin powder by Polycore. I'll have a link in the description, um, you know, after the, 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 the live stream, once I go in and update the, uh, um, the details on the video and stuff like that, I'll have some links um, to those products if you're interested in picking some of those up and using them. Um, but, and then what I'm laying down right here, I think, which is really kind of key for this, um, is I'm using a size A um, Pro Wrap Color Fast um, white thread. Um, and again, using white, one, because the, the, the blank here is white, and I'm going for this black and white with gray theme on the rod. But really, you'll see um, that I'm using the white thread uh, kind of as a canvas. Um, and, and it's a, a pretty interesting way to get a different take um, on using your pigments, um, you know, and, and coming up with a d different unique look every time, uh, every time you do it. And I think you can be, you know, really uh, creative as you want to be when you do this. Um, and what I will do, what my plan is here, um, is we're going to lay this white wrap out really quick and I'm trying to go as fast as I can. This is probably where a power wrapper would make pretty quick work of this. Um, but today, I'm going to lay down this white thread and then I'm going to do this pigment work um, and then we'll stop. Uh, and then I think what I'll do is I'll do a live stream next week and show kind of a continuation. We'll kind of pick up um, from wherever we leave off today um, and, and we'll pick up and kind of build on what we've done so far today. So, um, but uh, stay with me. I, I think you guys will... I think you guys will enjoy this and see this before. And then those of you that have just, just joined, have you guys used, you can leave a comment down in the comment block, but have you guys used Polycore 
um, resin powder before or any type of resin powder um, before, leave a comment down and let me know. Or if, if you hate resin or if you've never used them, I'll be interested. Uh, I'm kind of interested to hear what you guys think about uh, not resin, but uh, resin powder or pigment, if you will. I'm kind of interested in your guys' thoughts behind that. So, trying to get down here, go as fast as we can, down to this white thread, um, or run this white thread all the way down. I like doing one continuous span for this type of technique. Never used it myself. Okay, Scott, welcome to the, welcome to the live stream, Scott. Glad you can make it. Um, so, hopefully, um, this will, uh, you know, maybe give you some, some encouragement or some ideas and ways that you guys could use pigment. Luminous powder, yellow, green, glow for my uh, cat rot. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Awesome, James. So you do quite a bit of cat rod building. I think that's pretty neat, man. People building catfish rods and then you see they got kind of, I don't know if there's black lights. Um, or whatever people have when they're bank fishing or whatever, and then uh, all those rods light up. I think that is pretty, uh, pretty darn neat. So I like, what I was saying is I, I like one continuous span of thread here. Um, you know, you could stop halfway or whatever way, change it up, switch out some thread. You could do that for this technique. Um, but I, I like just doing one smooth layout so it just looks like one big long piece of white um, thread wrap and then for those of you that are just joining what I'm doing is I'm wrapping this uh, pro wrap color fast size a white thread all the way up to this mark right here um, and this is actual this mark here is actually um, the heel of this CRB um, laser um, hard water guide or ice fishing guide that I have so the way it's set up is I basically measured out where I wanted my guide eye to be at. I put my guide down. Sorry about that, as you can see there. And then I put that tape there to mark the heel. Um, Donald, I haven't used resin powder on poles, but have used it. Yep, agree. That's a great recommendation. And I do the same thing. I like to play around with it a little bit. Um, if, if this is you know your first time, or if you've been on this channel before, you know I like to use wooden dowels quite a bit. I feel like you know, you can never go wrong with wooden dowels because if you make a mistake, uh, you can just kind of cut it up and throw it away or throw it in the trash can or kind of restart. Hey, Donald, welcome from St. Augustine, Florida. Scott, you tried using the luminous powder for fishing at night as well. R wrong thing, and it wasn't glow powder. Yeah, I bet it did. That's unfortunate, man. That's unfortunate. Were you able to, Scott, were you able to, go, like, take it off? Um, like if you were like replacing a guide and then redo it with the right product. And then, um, hey, Duck, what's going on? Check it in. Welcome, welcome to the live stream, Duck. Today we're doing, uh, and anybody else that just joined, I'm doing a little different take with some pigment. And today I'm using two colors. I'm using Polycore Metallic Black and Polycore Metallic White um, Resin Powder. And we're going to do a different take um, on using pigments. Maybe something you never thought about before. James, yes, from my brother-in-law. Okay, yep, use for, yep, got it. So um, I am going to hopefully maybe show you guys something that you haven't thought about before. Maybe you haven't seen before. Or, or maybe at least you haven't tried before. And, and it maybe encourage you to try it. So I'm going to keep on going. I'm almost down to my mark here. Oops. That's what I get for not paying attention. I kind of doubled over there. All right. All right. So again, just carrying on with this uh, white um, color fast thread by ProWrap. Okay, I saw it. Yep, you use the uh, dowel for an inexpensive way to practice, Duck. I'm telling you, it's a good way to do it. 
Um, so we're just wrapping this down. And then again, I'm just trying to get to my spot down here, just a little bit off the screen. And that's where we're going to go ahead and add uh, or tie off the thread. I could. I use it on a dragon scale in between a split grip, too. I'm a bit lazy to redo. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, you should give it a try. Sky, you should try to replace that stuff, man. See if it'll come out. But I know sometimes it's frustrating, man. You do that and you put all that time into it and you're like, man, it's just kind of demoralizing sometimes a little bit. But And then, um, so let me know what you guys think so far. If you're getting something out of the video so far, go ahead and, and hit the like button. Uh, hopefully the algorithm will pick it up and, and you know, let other people know that, that we're doing a live stream today. But we're wrapping this down, almost down to the end. And then, I mean, as you guys are probably fully aware, um, you know, when you're working with uh, pigment powder, um, really of any type, um, you you want to be a little cautious with that stuff. It's 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 very, especially um, in these packs here, um, where it it differs a bit. Um, I got quite a, I, ha I have quite a bit of pigment and I'll, I'll show you guys some stuff here. Um, so where, where this differs a little bit, um, you know, if I'm just grabbing a few examples here. So where, where that pigment from polycore differs a little bit, where it comes into these, um, these Ziploc bags, when you open them, they like to kind of pop a little bit and, and flush out versus, um, you know, if you use like uh, Nuno Paulino pigments, they come with a little screw cap. They got a lot of great colors, um, you know, for mar marbling pigments that he has. Um, CRB has the same thing. You can pick up some of their stuff where it's metallic, where it's got the screw cap. I'm a, I'm a true fan of the, the Nuno Paulino um, pigments. I have all of them. Um, CRB also, you, you know, has some liquid pigment and I do use liquid pigment a bit. Um, and I like mixing it with powdered pigment for some reason. Um, I think it gives a pretty cool, um, look. You'll actually see a video here probably next week, um, in my shorts video, if you will, um, that has, uh, some green and yellow, um, pigment work that I did on a salmon rod. And um, it, it was a combination of both liquid um, and powder pigment. So, but I'm wrapping down, almost down here to the end. And then what we'll do once we get down here is we will tie this off and uh, start doing what uh, this this technique. Yeah, the screw cap. Yep. Yes, and you open up the freaking plastic bag on those things, man, and it's like, uh, you know, those boxes that you open up and glitter and stuff flies everywhere, right? It's kind of the same thing. It gets on your workstation, if, and if you have your, your, like, hand wrapper or something like that there, it gets on top of there, and it just kind of gets everywhere. So um, I'm almost down to the end, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right, so we're coming down here. And then I guess probably what I could have done is had half of this rod wrapped maybe, or this wrap done to where I didn't take up so much time wrapping. And so I, I, I do apologize for that. Um, but we're almost down to this piece of tape that I want to get to. Um, and then we'll we'll pick up. And and again, if you're just joining, we're, we're laying down some white um, size A pro wrap color fast thread one continuous kind of butt wrap or decorative wrap that will also serve as um, the under wrap for uh, my first guide here which is one of the CRB laser guides for this uh, it's an ice fishing blank if you will ice fishing rod blank um, but what I am making um, kind of dual purposing them but I'm, what I'm really making or intend to make them into um, is squid jig rods. Um, so you use the same kind of reels, um, you know, conventional reel or like a, an ice fishing reel, um, and you can uh, jig for, for squid at nighttime. So 
kind of the same thing. You know, you're talking about the catfish uh, rod building with some of the, uh, the glow pigment uh, people like to put in their guide wraps and stuff. So, um, but we're almost down to the end. And then what I will do is I will show you this technique. Um, hopefully you guys, um, you know, at least get something out of it. Uh, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't seen it. Um, but this white thread is really key for this. Um, in my mind, could you do what I'm going to show you with other threads? Um, I think you could. Um, I think you could, but I, I like the white thread just depending because of the colors and stuff, especially if you're going to use bright colors. Um, you know, it'd be a little bit harder to hide some of those or show some of those bright colors on some different colored threads. So this white thread is kind of a good canvas, I think, for that. And the reason that I'm using size A thread um, is because it has, of course, a smaller diameter. So it's because it's a color fast thread, I wanted to use a smaller diameter thread so the individual pieces of thread aren't so visible when the finish goes on them. And the second part is, is I want the finish to penetrate it enough to hold it, but I don't want it to lose its color when I put the finish on it. James Lee, just don't sneeze as your, oh yeah. Yeah, don't do that either. It's the same thing with gold leaf, man. If you can pull out some gold leaf and you sneeze or there's a slight breeze, that stuff flies everywhere. <clears throat> so yeah, so that, that second reason, you know, using this uh, color fast thread is when I put the finish on, I want the white thread to stay white and I don't want the pigment to, to get absorbed too much into the thread. Um, but then again, I kind of do, and you'll see what I'm saying here in just a second. And there really is kind of no rhyme or reason, um, for, for this, for this, um, squid jig rod that I'm making here. Um, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back on a couple of different live streams and just continue to build out this rod with you guys. Um, so you guys can see, um, how it's happening and and so like today we'll do this, this pigment thing. Uh, and then next week I'll do another live stream video kind of picking up from where we left off. Um, and it'll be something, you know, a, another technique with pigment different from what we're going to do today. And then each one that we do, um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. So I'm going to have, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have some, some pigment work on this blank. Um, we're going to do some foil blank or some foil work on this blank. Um, and some different thread stuff. So again, um, you know, stay tuned so over the next two or three uh, live streams, we're gonna be working on this rod. And what I'll do is I'll make sure I advertise it a little bit better in the community tab, letting you guys know, um, you know, what, what we'll be working on um, in that live stream. So you guys are a little bit, so, you, so you, you're tracking, you know, that we're still building on this rod or, or something different. Um, so I'm just trying to tie this off real quick. All right, so I got that thread through there. Pull that tight, take my razor blade, cut it off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this tape. All right, and then just take my burnishing tool, come around and pack that, and just rub that on a little bit here. All right, now, what I want to do is I want to kind of move that stuff out of the way. Um, and the one thing I like to do when messing around with these pigments um, is I'm just going to put some, uh, some gloves on, try to keep it a little bit easier. So when I start touching other fishing rods, when I'm done making this video, I'm not transferring that stuff onto everything else, like on finished coats and stuff like that. So uh, I got a couple of plastic shot glasses. Um, so I'm, I want to use these. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to take this rod for a second, set it aside. Um, I am going to take a little bit of the black pigment here and I'm going to open this up. No sneezing, hopefully. Again, this is black metallic. You guys can see that a little bit down in there. I'm going to take this toothpick, I like these kind of flat toothpicks a little bit, and I'm just gonna grab some of this powder, and I'm gonna put that 
in a shot glass. And I'll grab just a tiny bit more. I don't want that much. Well, what the hell? Okay. So I have that. I'm going to throw that toothpick in the trash. I'm going to seal this off. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing in this shot glass with, this is the metallic white. And so I'm going to put some of this metallic white into the shot glass. No sneezing. You can see it all poofy everywhere. All right. More like a metallic silver, but okay. So I'll put that in there. Throw that in the trash. All right, now what I want to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab my blank. Now remember, I have, um, it's a white blank, but remember that I have this white uh, color fast thread, size A from Pro Wrap, and then I have my two shot glasses, right? And what I don't have is I don't have any finish. Um, so, what I want to do is I'm going to just take a Q-tip. I'm going to come in here and grab some of that black powder or that black pigment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the one glove off because I don't want to touch it on my rod. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. And I'm just taking this black powder or this pigment and I'm just kind of getting jiggy with it a little bit here and I'm it, there's no, no, no method to the madness I'm just trying to you know whatever 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 looks right I think maybe And I think you can see why I'm using, why I chose to use the, the white thread, right? So I'm just taking it and I'm pushing that in. And whatever pattern I can kind of come up with. And then even with a little light stuff. So I can come in there. And then a little bit more down here. That's going to be an that's going to be part of the under wrap anyways, but all right. So what I think I want to keep that like that. I have a little bit of a mess there, but that is all right. I just don't want to blow that anywhere. Now I want to come back with the white or the metallic white, um, which really kind of looks silver. And I'm going to do the same thing. Get some on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here maybe in some spots by itself maybe over some black a little bit like that and then again no no rhyme or reason here and right there just like that i'll turn that over get a clean piece of q-tip And then I'm just taking that Q-tip and I'm kind of forcefully getting it down in that thread, right? All right, and then I want to come back one more time with this black. And again, this is just the powder. And then I'm going to come in here. And I want to have a little, little bit of force because I'm trying to get it to, to bite, right? I'm trying to get this pigment to bite um, into, into this thread right there, right there. Maybe just a little bit more dark, 
dark thread. And then maybe a little bit more right there. So that I think is what I want. And then one more time with some of this. Nope, I'm gonna get a clean one one more time. I'm gonna get another clean Q-tip and I wanna just kinda come in now carefully, I think, and just come in here where I think there's just, just some white at, right? So I, I'm not trying to get any black in that spot, but I think I want some of this white metallic pigment in there. All right. Yeah. I think that looks all right. Yep, I think that looks okay. What do you guys think so far? So let me, I'm gonna take this over to the side really quick. So what I like to do is I'm gonna take this and uh, I'm just gonna kind of smack it on the trash can a little bit. And then what I did is I kind of blew off the excess. Um, I wanted to blow the excess off a little bit so I can see if it's still in there. And it is, so you can see that white metallic is in there. In some spots it's a little heavier than others. In some spots it's a little lighter, but you can see we have kind of this, almost like the charcoal look, if you will, um, like a charcoal pencil type look but I, I, I want to try this one more time and try to get this metallic white in there a bit more. And then um, I'm going to talk to you about the next step. So real quick, um, have you guys ever seen this technique before? Have you seen anybody do this before? Um, let me know down in the comments block. Um, and the second thing is, do you think this is something that you'd be willing to try yourself? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments block. Um, and so I'm just trying to get this metallic white to stick in there on that thread. I, I really want it to get into the fibers of that thread. All right, and then one more time, I'm just gonna take, shake this off. All right. And if I bring it up too close, it gets a, a little bit too there we go. All right, Steve, awesome. So that is where we are at um, with the pigment. All right, Scott, awesome. So what I, would, what I like to do um, is I like to let this sit. Don't ask me why. Um, I, I, it, there's probably there's probably no method to the madness, um, but I like to let this set for at least um, you know overnight or something, um, and just let those uh, pigments kind of soak into that thread a little bit. Again, it's just the powder; it's on the thread, so I just kind of let it sit. So what I'll do is. Um, I will let it set for a day and then I will come back and I will put um, one coat of finish on top of this um, and then I will go on to the next step and it and it does still leave when you put the finish on here um, you, you may think it would be a hey, real time what's going on I, I'm glad I'm glad to see you give it a try man and so um, <clears throat> when I put the finish on there you think your gut kind of tells you oh if I put the finish on here that 
that pigment's just going to start moving around in the finish, which is not the case. That's why I kind of took off the extra, um, the extra finish, and I'm just going with what is kind of adhered itself to to the thread. I'll put one coat of finish on there, and then I'll get into um, a second step or a next step um, of doing some stuff. So I think what I'll do is when we do the, what I'll do is I'll put a, a single coat of finish on this. Uh, and then we, we, when we come back next week for the live stream, um, which I will do on Monday next week um, at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, next Monday, I'll do the next live stream. Um, and what I will do is I will already have one coat of finish on here, but I will show you what we will do for the next step. So, hey, I, ho I hope this was, uh, I hope I was able to show you guys something um, and you were able to, you know, take something and put it in your kit bag. Um, hey, James. Yeah, agrees, like a sand camouflage, I agree. So, um, and I hope you give it a try, James. So, you know, I, I hope, um, yeah, like dry marbling, right? Right duck, kind of a dry marble or the dry technique or whatever. Um, so what I'll do, doesn't matter if you apply finish right away. Real time, um, to be honest, I don't think so. It's just me being kind of paranoid saying, hey, I think I wanna leave some finish or I wanna let it set for a little bit before I put the first coat of finish on it. Um, you're welcome, Scott. So I'll put one coat of finish on here. We'll come back next week on the next live stream on Monday um, at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hey, John, how's it going? Um, and then what I will do is we will pick up from this, this dry pigment technique. We will pick up and build on it from there. So again, I hope this helps uh, and hope to see you guys next week. That's right. You're welcome, Duck. And, uh, and you're welcome, Joey, and for everybody else, and for when this is back on the regular live stream, uh, on the regular feed, if you will, uh, make sure you guys watch this next video here. And until next time, guys, take care. Bye.